Did you hear that Bitcoin was hacked? What? Really? No, not really. Bitcoin has never been hacked. What if someone hacks it? Well, that's really unlikely. So you're saying there's a chance? It's a very, very small chance. Tell me how. I want to hack Bitcoin. Well, you personally have zero chance of success, but I'll go over some ways you could attempt it. Yeah, yeah. Keep things simple. Okay, first of all, the Bitcoin network is secured by computing power. This computing power is often called hash rate. So whenever I say hash rate, it refers to the computing power that secures the Bitcoin network. Say a hacker obtains more than half of this hash rate. One potential outcome would be a 51% attack. So a 51% attack would occur when someone controls the majority of Bitcoin's hash rate? Correct. The attacker would have the ability to exclude, change or reverse transactions. There are two ways of attempting a 51% attack. The first being with fake hash rate and the second with physical hash rate. Let's start by looking into the possibility of a fake hash rate attack. How can a hash rate be fake? I'll get to that shortly. To understand fake hash rate, I first need to explain a mining pool. OK, go ahead. Bitcoin miners can combine their hash rate into mining pools. By doing so, miners win Bitcoin rewards more frequently. So mining pools are places miners go to work together. And by working together, they have a higher chance of getting rewarded? Yeah. The people in charge of mining pools can direct the entire pool's hash rate. A successful fake hash attack requires an entity to take over several of the largest mining pools and redirect the combined hash rate. OK, so an attacker needs to control the majority of mining pools' hash rate to have a chance of a successful attack? Yes. You still didn't explain why it's called fake hash rate. Oh yeah, it's called fake hash rate because the attacker doesn't actually own the mining pool's hash rate. The attacker is just redirecting the hash rate from the individual miners in the pools. OK, so the attacker is just a hash rate thief. Precisely. Let's put this into context. Hello, I'm China. I am home to many Bitcoin miners. My land has vast amounts of stranded energy. China, thank you for allowing me to mine Bitcoin with all this cheap and stranded energy. You are welcome, Bitcoin miner. Please keep mining since most of this energy would be going to waste anyway. You see, Bitcoin mining became very popular in China. Yeah, so what's your point? The point is lots of hash rates and mining pools are located in China. This centralization of Bitcoin miners under one government posed a threat to the security of the network. Oh, damn. So what's China going to do? Hey, Bitcoin miner. What's up, China? You're banned. What? We just banned you. Leave the country. OK, <laughs> this is so sad. I'll just take my hash rate and mine Bitcoin elsewhere. So China had a chance to attack, but forced all the miners out of the country instead. Yes, but again, even for China, the chances of a fake hash rate attack succeeding would be slim. Why? If an attacker like China controlled 51% of the mining pools, they must sustain the hash rate. Individual miners can switch pools in a matter of seconds, taking their hash rate with them. This scenario would leave China with little time before the honest miners notice the attack and switch pools. Oh, OK. Makes sense. The individual miners have the final say over what happens with their hash rate. Yup. I get it now. What about a physical hash rate attack? This type of attack is far more expensive, so anybody willing to attempt it must be prepared to lose billions of dollars. Billions? So like nobody can attempt it? Yeah, but we'll still cover it anyway. To date, the Bitcoin network uses more energy than some countries. It uses more energy than countries? That's crazy. It's not crazy. It means it's working. Using less energy to protect itself means it would be prone to more attacks. So energy really does secure Bitcoin? Yes. The less energy, the easier it is for someone to control it. If a government or centralized party wanted to take on this massive attack, they would need more energy than the entire honest Bitcoin network. And that's why an attack would cost so much. Yes, you can't fake energy, and energy costs money. The countries that could afford this attack would need to risk billions of dollars in hardware, energy costs, and time. That wouldn't make much sense for any country to try. An alternative option would be to seize mining equipment in a military operation. Why couldn't that work? This option would be just as expensive as the last, and planning to capture thousands of mining machines across dozens of countries is far-fetched. Here, as an example, let's bring in some new characters. Hello, I'm going to hack Bitcoin by buying up a lot of hash rate. Hello, attacker. I'm the Bitcoin network. I see that you're trying to hack me. Yes, you can't stop me. 
Hello, attacker. We just kicked you off the network. Congratulations. Oh no, what are we going to do now? We have billions of dollars of mining hardware and nothing to use it for. What a waste. Hello, attacker. It would be far more profitable to work with us and use your hardware and energy to mine Bitcoin the correct way. You are right. Yes. So even if an attacker wanted to hack Bitcoin, it would make more sense for them to just mine Bitcoin like the rest of the miners. They wouldn't lose any money. They would make money. Yes, you understand it. Countries that view Bitcoin as a threat are more likely to overregulate or ban its use than spend billions of dollars on mining hardware and energy. That makes sense. With all of this speculation about hacking Bitcoin, people forget to ask, why hasn't Bitcoin been hacked already? Because it's better to just mine instead? Yes. There are political and economic incentives for more and more people to push the system forward and strengthen its security. At the same time, there are also strong political, economic and technical disincentives that prevent attacks. 